spectator and I'm gonna just fly around and show him what's going on so this is kind of a six month in world tour is that six months wow might be actually if I went and did an LS I st uh, January 24th is when we started this no what am I doing <laughs> see server Rudy we started this Rudy was created August 27th yeah no it was not created August 27th it was actually possibly December 26th that we started this so we're actually eight months in <clears throat> eight or nine anyway because we are I'm going to game mode creative spectator so I started us near this um, small island which is not their main island this is actually the island I'm gonna I'm gonna also run a quick little fun thing okay just because I like this tool MC din map I have a dynamic map and we'll be able to kind of see what's going on here I'm going to come into OBS or oh yeah OBS I'm going to add a window we're going to capture the browser I know this will be really really small I, and I don't believe I can um, let me just projector rename order move up move down properties filters can I add an opacity filter uh, it doesn't look like it. That's all right. Close. So anyway, what I could do is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and transition. What we're doing here is starting up. That is not what I wanted to open. What we're doing is starting up here at negative 1673 by negative 2105. It's basically just this tiny little island. But as you can see, <clears throat> such as right here, we've got a monument. Underwater, basically an underwater cool little thing. We've got a monument there. we got a monument there. This is the one that I have basically taken over completely. Um, and I've turned that into a guardian farm, or am in the process of at the moment. So this is my current project. If we fly over here, you'll see it coming into view. This is the current thing that I'm working on, which is basically turning, I suppose we probably should, I mean, for those who don't understand what a guardian monument is, this is not it. This is a farm to capture guardians, kill them, collect loot from them, that kind of thing. Mostly because sea lanterns are super cool. But I mean, we could fly over and look at another, possibly, if we could find one. This is pretty far out here, too. As you can see, we're very slowly moving around. If I were to pull up... Okay, if we just head straight east, we'll run into another one, and then we can see exactly what that is. 
Yeah, there it is. Did I build something on top of that one? It looks like I built a little base on top of one, or maybe Andy did. Brother-in-law is Andy. His brother is Michael. Their friend and my friend, Joy, also joined up. But basically, we've got just a little thing. Here's the main treasure room. Basically, go through all these 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 rooms. They call, they say they're procedurally generated. Basically, when the monument generates for the first time, these rooms are randomly laid out. So no monument is the same as another. There is always a little bit of randomization as far as layout. There's the main boss. There are three of these per monument, and you they give you mining fatigue which means you basically can't break anything by hand even if you've got tools it'll take you too long and as soon as it wears off it'll give it to you again so <clears throat> yeah that is basically what that giant cube I showed you earlier was except that I took this entire structure completely down I just removed it all the way down to this flat platform at the bottom I left the legs in place, but from here all the way up is gone, and I've replaced it with a box. And in that box I am creating ways to capture guardians. And, yeah. Harvest them, basically. So I'm going to just go home here, just because. This is our main island. <clears throat> we started out without any of the buildings. We really have kind of abandoned this area, mostly. I um, keep it up just because I have a cow farm and a pig farm here, and we feed them, and they multiply and kill themselves by cramming. Basically, if too many creatures are in the same space, they'll cram, entity cram, which means they'll just... The, enough will die that you will head back down to the limit. I've got a 9 oven super smelter here. Sorry. You load the top chest up with stuff to smelt and load the bottom chest up with charcoal or any other fuel. Hit the button and it will go until it's no longer receiving items. We have our spawn island here. Here's our spawn base couple months in, I created a tiny little fox base, which they don't really do much. They just feast on berries and stuff. And he built this tunnel out the back. Yeah, it's just basically storage, a starter base. Michael took the idea we had on day one and multiplied it up and put in these amazing stairs. Uh, put the made these little alcoves for storage. I put the armor stands in there with an intention of doing something like this. You see I ripped off Mumbo Jumbo's skin to make that guy. Um, he even took us down. We, this used to be a straight staircase all the way to the bottom, which you can see now it's got a little bit of a twist to it. I created a Rudy P RP logo. You can see the P is out of brick, and the R is just by adding one non-brick block. This basically stands for Rudy Powell, since that's their last name, and of course they married my sister, which means she's now a Rudy, etc. Uh, we basically built in an island, so very close to the island we've got canyons and stuff. But if we head back in, this was our first branch mine. And this goes pretty far back. And just, it's just, it's a way to find diamonds, basically. We're, this is just a diamond mine. No, nothing else. So it's just a lot of crisscrossing tunnels in search of diamond. With all of the risks of, um, yeah, lava. <laughs> all that. And honestly, we have not explored hardly any of this, but we probably should at some point, if it's even possible. Um, let's see. 
This is not my tunnel. This is not anybody's tunnel. These are. Anything with torches is somewhere we have all been. Or one of us has been. We have another staircase to the surface over here. Which pops out right there. This is my first mine. I did not realize how far away it was to the house, which is over there. <clears throat> kind of looking at an x-ray view here. Out in the ocean, we finally got enough treasure to get a conduit built, so now we can swim around here without drowning. The worst monster in the first couple weeks slash months were drowned, which are... Um, water faring zombies that just basically crop up, wander in, and start hitting you. I put in a fix for that, or rather um, someone on planet Minecraft agreed that drowned were overpowered. Basically they wield tridents on a very rare occasion and those that do wield the tridents hurt like hell. So. I found a, um, what they call a data pack, which is just a little, kind of a script, kind of a couple settings. It basically over, it, it's an override to the base game, a homemade override, which lets you modify a couple things. And this modification basically killed every zombie that has a trident. It will transport it to underneath the world, which effectively kills it and then it will change the chance of a any drowned zombie dropping a trident from only zombies that carry tridents to every zombie but the chance is lower just to make sure that yeah we're going to get one additionally all drowned zombies will instead of throwing a trident at you afflict you with blindness and drag you down underwater. So you'll be sitting here, one will come up behind you and tag you. It'll do the standard damage, it'll blind you, which means it gets super dark, and it will drag you down one block. So enough of that, and you basically end up at the bottom of the ocean and have a very high chance of drowning. So it's kind of a, it's a good trade-off. Out to the south, I can never get the cardinal directions here, is my massive-ish storage system, which I just built this based on some designs that you'd find online. Uh, you come in here, actually you come in this direction. I made this um, distribution system myself, but the design is used very widely, so I can't claim any credit for um, actually coming up with anything on my own. It's just basically picking and choosing systems that I like. You drop a bunch of items in here, all those items f get piped up and around and around, up again, around and around, and then into an overflow chest. If any of these items filters, these are basically item filters, if any of those items are filtered out, they will suck down into these chests prematurely. You can see I've got a whole stash of obsidian, a little bit of glowstone, a little bit of magma, soul sand, no nether brick to fill up the filter yet, no nether, red nether, red nether wart blocks. Um, we've got some sandstone, red sand, nothing. You can see up here We've got these uh, hoppers up here. I don't know if I can check them out, but basically we have to fill them up with 41 of the, the item we're filtering out, and then everything will flow into the chest. So anything you find empty, there's either less than or exactly 41 in the system at any one time. And you don't, you could remove half of that and still refrain from breaking the system, but usually it's more like Eh. You give up a little bit. You give up 41. 
in order to have a nice small stash over here. And in fact, that block of redstone is not supposed to be there. But I did a recent shift, so some of the stuff might still be getting um, filtered out. Any case, south east, I guess. Yeah, southeast from here is my main base of operation. This is the place I have, I personally have put the most work into. You can see here, here is a standard Impulse SV villager breeder. We've got the farm out here. We've got the villagers in here. Currently it is broken. Currently he has a fix out for it, but these two villagers are supposed to be standing in this square of trapdoors, or two of these villagers are supposed to be in this square of trapdoors. The farmer throws down food. They sleep at night. Those two combined conditions will cause them to breed. Babies will drop into the water stream, and then those babies, via a logical geek boy design, will pipe up and then back down as adults. And so we have a collection of adults that we can now run minecarts through. The minecart pipes up. There's a zombie in that tunnel. The minecart pops up, and then we just do whatever we want with it. Right now, I have been piping them into here. Recently, I had a zombie incursion into this area, and over half of my villagers died. But these villagers will trade with you certain items. So it took a while, but I had some very good villagers over here. Currently, they don't do anything. Um, well, mostly because I'm in spectator mode, I can't show you those trades. But you can see he's labeled fortune. If I go game mode creative, you can see he sells fortune books, fortune three books for one emerald, and zombie kills helped with that. Normally it would be 20, 20 emeralds and one book. Mending, 12 emeralds and one book. Yeah. So that was my, that was my most um, horrific and annoying project. After that I decided to get a little bit creative and I built this Japanese pagoda type of design all by myself. No, well, I had a photograph of a Japanese pagoda, so I used that to kind of come up with this design of acacia and prismarine, the block that you get in one of those ocean monuments, which is why I defeated it in the first place was so that I could build this roof, which is kind of a patinaed copper roof. Over here we have the bottom half of a an iron farm. The top half is up here. We have a zombie, which scares three villagers over here, and in fact this villager is on the wrong side, as is this villager. But it's still working, as far as I know. I hope. <laughs> I really hope, because this was the most painful villager project I've ever dealt with, ever. Anyway, if villagers are scared and they can work and they can sleep, there will be iron golems that spawn up here. The iron golem then slides off, lands into these pools. The pools, via water current, drift them into these lava blocks, and they burn. As soon as they die, all their stuff which is iron, drops into this water stream and gets filtered out, which drops into here, into a massive storage system of iron. 
And yes, I am very confident it is not working because this hasn't seen anything for weeks. And this while wow, full and should have much more than just this second level. Anyway, what we have here from down, down from here, I found a triple chunk, triple slime chunk. Basically, this is an Iscal 85 design, which boasts slimes, which are attracted to, well, iron golems, like this. The slimes fall into the bottom, they die on magma blocks, and in some amount of time you can hear that rumble, those drops from the dead magmas, or the dead slimes, are picked up by minecarts, and the minecarts stop here, or slow down here, and fill up this chest. <laughs> Right now, this chest is extremely full and extremely overloaded, and so everything up there is despawning and not making it anywhere. But, if I had a good system, I would be pulling all of this stuff. I would probably raise this up two blocks, pull all the slime, throw it into this water stream, the water stream would pipe it up to the surface, same here, <clears throat> and then from the surface I could actually store it in bulk, but right now I've only got two of these double chests that are storing slimes, which it, it fills up very, very quickly. So. That basically does it for that portion of this area. I've got a zombie hanging out there. He's going to be trouble. Unless I can fix this breeder and fix the iron farm. Yeah, I've got also a couple mini farms over here. Right here is where I've got a small kelp farm. Which is not working currently because my... I want it to auto smelt all the kelp into dried kelp, but currently the bamboo that acts as the fuel is not prolific enough, and therefore, and it burns very quickly, so the kelp is loading up these hoppers faster than the bamboo can cook them back down. Here I've got a bit of a pumpkin farm. You can see pumpkins growing there. As soon as they do grow, it triggers a line of pistons, which you cannot see in Spectator because it's all... Actually, you can. These are pistons. As soon as the pumpkin grows over into this block, the piston will fire, break the pumpkin, that signal will also trigger this minecart to travel down and suck the loose pumpkin entities out and bring it back to the storage chest right there. It's simple. It's easy. I had plans for a wheat farm using a villager, but the villager died, so I haven't done any more with that. Um, the rest are manual farms. Chorus fruit is manual. Had a bit of a test bed here to see how many flowers I could get. And yeah, so this is right now a manual wheat farm. I also have some tree farming, manually tree, tr manual tree farm over here, specifically for this brown dirt block known as Podzol. Because if we head back over to home, And over to here, you can see my current fun project. I would say the Guardian Farm is my serious project. This is my fun project. Is a dirt track, much like what you would expect from, say, Mario Kart. Except that we are using saddled pigs. Saddled pigs and carrots on a stick. 
carrots on sticks. If you mount a pig and hold carrot on a stick, the pig will follow that carrot much like you would expect a donkey to follow a carrot on a stick. And the idea being, if all four of us get on a pig and we're all holding a carrot, we can race each other around this track a couple times and see who wins. So currently, that wheat farm over there, plus the podzol farming that I'm doing, I wouldn't call it an automatic farm, is being used to create this track. And I'm going to decorate it up and make it a lot cooler. Also around here, I have a trail out to... Well, this is a fun little grid. But if you look, it's actually four creepers. I just used the carpet to decorate that. It is an underwater creeper farm. If we were in creative, we would have creepers that we're actually working here. Right now, this chunk is not loaded. Although you can hear the... Actually, is it loaded? Well, there are no monsters spawning. But once this reaches zero, the whole system will shift. All of these mine carts will park up at the top. Which they just did. You can see it's filling back up. But a couple of these should have water now, which none of them do, which is kind of frustrating. But I think that might be a spectator thing as well. If dispensers don't work in Spectator, then that's that. Anyway, this is a creeper farm. The idea is creepers would spawn up there. Water would push them off every 30 seconds or so. Every other 30 seconds, these minecarts would roll under, pick up everything that the creepers dropped from fall damage, and deliver them to these chests right here. I manually go through, pull out all the gunpowder, I have also got a tiny little sugarcane farm, which you use to make paper. Combine paper with gunpowder and you have a fire tracker, which we have right here. You use this for uh, flying around the server if you have a pair of wings known as an elytra. And those are very difficult to get, but we actually did that as well which we might get around to. If we go home again... You can see I've also got a chicken farm. There are a bunch of chickens in there. They lay eggs. The eggs are automatically dispensed over here, underneath this lava pocket. As soon as the chicken grows up, it is burned by the lava pocket and drops as cooked chicken into this chest along with some feathers. I have a switch here that will switch from dispensing underneath the lava pocket to just dis to just storing the egg. So instead of automatically dispensing the egg and hopefully hatching a chicken, we instead save the egg so we can take those around and use them elsewhere like in cake or whatever else you use. Um, eggs for in this game. This is a stork that I built. Michael just recently became a father, so I went into creative mode and designed him a stork and then left this as a as part of their congratulations video on Facebook. And then I rebuilt it here in the actual world. And yeah, I, um, I left a villager in here, but I'm kind of sad that it's still not in here. I guess it must have gotten killed. It's actually good to know. I should fix that. No, I didn't put it inside the body of the bird. I put it in the bag. And he's still here. And his name is Infant. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Over from here, I've got what I've been calling Mount Doom. I had planned on making this manually, 
But then I saw something called lava casting and I decided to give it a shot myself. And it is actually coming out quite nicely. Right now it's just this half circle. Um, you pour lava down, you pick the lava up, the lava flows down like this. You pour water on top of that flowing lava and it creates cobblestone. And you do that over and over and over and it basically builds up into this massive structure which a lot of people use for griefing, which a lot of people use for quickly building massive mountains and stuff like that. Yeah, it's been an interesting project and it's coming along fairly nicely. I like it a lot. I don't like the um, artificial look to it because lava flows in a very diamond-like pattern, as does water, but it is coming along and it looks really cool when you randomize it up top enough. Um, I believe everything else from here is far enough away that it would require the nether. So let's head into the nether. We started this on 115.2 MV, MVTP, World Nether. We'll just head over here. So here we have the um, spawn area of the nether. I decided, and I believe, Sean, you saw this, one night I got drunk and decided to make Gary Busey pixel art. And I recreated Gary Busey pixel art here in the nether, and I have decided to call Gary Busey God of the Nether. <laughs> At least here. This is a portal to that creeper farm. Um, from here, it's basically this. Not a lot. Fairly drab. Here's a portal to the item storage. A portal to my villager trading hall and mini farm area and this is the portal to the main area the main spawn island is what I call it we also I have built um, roof access up here or close to roof access a couple tunnels that head off in different directions Mesa shortcut if we head up here we have a portal to that lava cast Mount Doom area that I just showed you, as well as a cheated broken bedrock, which you're not supposed to be able to do this, up to the nether roof. So in its equivalent spot in the nether, Mount Doom is also home to the gold farm, which this is a standard Il Mango design, four layer spawning platforms for zombie pigmen. Pardon the rumble. <laughs> this is just a standard zombie pigmen farm, or piglin farm I guess they call it now in 116. We started in 115 and you can see these sit here. As soon as you aggro piglins, or zombie piglins, they will all rush you. And there's a bug in the game that is in the future going to be fixed that says that they will basically be angry at you forever until you disappear out of line of sight of say these three guys and those three guys and the other six guys on the other side basically this farm will run forever right now and you can um, load up on gold and experience points Additionally, I have created roof access to all the common portals. Like here, we've got villager trading, storage, and main spawn island. 
as well as Mount Doom. But it's more interesting if we head underground, like down here. Here's that creeper farm. Here is Mount Doom. All right. If we head back out, we will see that, yeah, we're heading up to the Mesa. And I've labeled a bunch of stuff, but if we head in here, we will see we're fairly far off. Uh, let me actually, because <laughs> we have ignored dynamic maps, this is where we started this little tour, up in here. This is Spawn Island. Directly west from Spawn Island is the Mesa base, which is where we are now. Let me go ahead and shift so that we're always following my icon. We've got a little village over here that we found. We've got this base in the middle of the Mesa. Uh, actually, this is a tower off the main area. We came here, we thought, oh, we should make our actual base over here, and it'd be so awesome. Great! But Spawn Island is where you'll end up if you ever lose a bed. <laughs> we don't care, we're gonna make it over here because this is way more fun. Okay. So we came over here, we took a mountain like this and converted it into a house like this. It's basically a cliff dwelling of sorts start at the ground floor. I took and kidnapped one of those guardians from that guardian box that I showed you at first. Carted him all the way down. Crazy amount of distance. From here all the way down through the rivers down to here. And I dropped him off in this tank where we are now. I actually did three, but um, one died on the way, and one died when I got here and tried to get him in. If we head up to the main floor, this is mostly Andy and Mike and Joy's area. I designed this, I designed this chandelier, this table. Michael did the rest. Michael seriously has fun decorating like this. He did this portion, which is our enchanting area. He did this, which is the main storage area for this base. Labeled it all. Since the main block is terracotta around the mesa, we have a ton of terracotta storage. As well as very valuable things. 63 diamonds just sitting there. There is a Minecraft community that used to exist back in the day called Kingdom Craft, and the way I heard it described was Kingdom Craft, you basically, they basically tried to replicate something like a Game of Thrones area, um, like, a, like a system of kingdoms, and you'd go off to some other region of the world and build a new kingdom. The thing was, the player base made this server called Kingdom Craft completely collaborative. Everything that was ever worked on was worked on collaboratively by all the players. So no one had their base and everybody else had their base. It was basically everybody's base and everybody's material, which is exactly what we're doing here. I collect red nether wart, wet, nether wart blocks I store it in here. Anybody can use nether warp blocks. Warp warp blocks. Leaves. I do have my own storage, but this is basically kind of community storage. I need to be very careful with my inventory, by the way, because this is all extremely valuable. 
And if I'm in creative, I'm gonna very likely lose it. <laughs> in here, I came up with a system of, um, I basically have OP permissions on this server as well as server admin, sysadmin. Therefore, I get into the back end and I install all the plugins like DINMAP, a bunch of other stuff. Ooh, that's some valuable stuff in there that I never knew about because I don't come up here. Nor does anyone else, honestly. <laughs> we have an outside access there. Yeah, as you can see, Michael went a bit nuts with building out these rooms in this base. To the extent that no one actually uses it, but it's there if they ever do. We uh, built a bridge across the little river here to the portal. And then we got a little bit creative with the village. This is not a normal nine Minecraft village. This is a Minecraft village that Michael decided to take over, wall in, and build castles into the walls of, as well as expand some of the houses. You can see here we have a golem problem. And we have a bit of a villager problem, though they're not acting too terribly at the moment. Yeah. The golem problem is uh, a bit high at the moment over here. As is the villager problem. There are a ton of villagers just roaming freely here. I complain, but it's all in good fun. Because this is an amazing build and I don't want to break it. And yeah. In this area, he built all this up, Michael did. I came in here and decided, oh, well, Michael also tried building a uh, trading hall, mostly for librarians. It is nighttime, so um, everybody is currently sleeping. But I decided, you know, there's one way to do librarians reliably. That's in here. So I came in here and I screwed around with it a little bit. And I built a full top level enchanted book library, bookstore basically. Every, every enchantment you can get from a librarian, you have right here. The prices are not ideal, but you have them. You can get your Unbreaking 3 Maybe it is 19 diamonds instead of 1. Maybe uh, maybe Protection 4 is 35 diamonds instead of 10. Sharpness 5 for 38. Maybe a couple are 64, but you have them. And if you can come up with the emeralds, which, to be honest, it doesn't take that long to do, it is very easy to make this work. So yeah, I've been in here multiple times. We've also got the breeder, which feeds the library, <clears throat> or did, until I finished it. We've also got the breeder for other things if we need it. <coughs> Since his daughter was born a couple months ago, I decided to build him a little uh, <coughs> congratulations gift, which was the Guardian of Eden. A little play on words there as well as give him a couple valuable items from the 116 update. Actually, there are no updates from the 116 update. There are items from the end which was which I built this a cup like a week or a couple days after we raided the end for the first time. In any case, I'm going to get rid of this cuz that's just a double item. Recently, as in last weekend, we started on this side of the uh, village. Namely, using new nether blocks to build up this area. We have some blackstone, we have bone block. We're slowly working on an interior. And Andrew, Andy, 
decided to make a map wall for us centered on our base which is right there as you can probably see in DINMAP yeah so DINMAP it's kind of a uh, <laughs> a redundant system but it's cool and there's our spawn base guardian farm is not in my iron farm and mini farm area is not in as well either but it doesn't matter we'll get there he realized that last couple days ago and said oh yeah I see how you, that is we need to maybe upgrade that now I'm saying you just need more space because if you zoom out anymore on the maps it's not going to look as cool zoom level 2 is the most I'd want to zoom out to make a map wall with after that you just ramp it up in size the wall itself um trying to think what else we've got from here I suppose the only other thing that I've been working on will back over to spawn base my spectator no whoa Uh, what is this direction? East? No. If we head straight east... I have a little bit of a project that I am currently working on that really nobody knows about, but they have gotten hints over. <laughs> Am I really heading east? Hard to believe. It's basically one of those map islands. <clears throat> you can create pixel art with maps and then put posters around the server. So far it is just a black rectangle. but um, And in fact I might not even travel all the way there because it's fairly far out. Interestingly I've got some torn apart landscape over here that I should probably come check out sometime. Um, let me go MVTP World Nether. I also have Multiverse on the uh, installed on this. So game mode spectator. I've also got multiverse installed in this server. So that means that basically I can load in new worlds without screwing around with this particular one. It is a little bit clunky, but it is really fun. Um, basically it adopts the main overworld the nether and the end as multiverse worlds whereas in a vanilla game they would function in tandem with one another and they it, it, it's all back-end technical stuff that this is ever touching on <clears throat> but basically I uh, we, we, we rated the end I got into here. Here's where our, um, what do you call this? This is the, the stronghold where the end portal is. I can't get there easily because I don't remember where it is coordinate wise to teleport there properly. So what I will do is just world the end. We'll teleport into the end and we land in the portal. That's not good at all. So, we'll do this the hard way, which is actually not that bad. Since I've got some rockets, I believe I am in survival mode. 
Yes. Come back to survival, and we'll just do this in survival since Spectator doesn't like to work for this kind of thing. Uh, yes. And I know that map wall. He has big plans for that too, Andy does. One is to um, take that map wall and start doing like banners at certain places for uh, marking, which should be extremely fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to that because I've never done banners on maps before. I've gotten map walls in other versions and other servers, but uh, nothing to this extent and no one to be excited about it with. So I just never followed through. Besides, maps are very easy in-game. They take a long time, but they're easy. So what we're going to do here, we were just here, but now we're here in survival. Which means we actually can go look at the stronghold that we raided. And this actually was a really cool stronghold. I'll see if I can show it to you here. Uh, down in here. Yeah, basically it was this canyon that got cut through the stronghold after the stronghold was created. Which is crazy, because that doesn't normally happen. Normally strongholds are this standard, also procedurally generated dungeon that has multiple features, but, and they, they sprawl, and they go places, and they're a huge maze, and you have to run the maze, but this particular one had a lava-bottomed canyon cut straight through it, which was very cool. I mean, I've seen strongholds at the bottom of the ocean, so you just dive down and break through the wall of the stronghold in the ocean. But, piece de resistance of the stronghold is the end portal. You head in here, you're now in the end. And this we have not done a lot with, mostly because there isn't really a lot to do in the end. You can go end busting to find the wings, which I have here. As you can see, you can see I have them on right there. I need to keep looking at the ground. And we have the dragon to beat. We've also got shulkers to kill. Portals to fly through. It's basically space world. If you head out here, there's no stars. It's all void. So my big project in here specifically has been rather... I need to get more of these, by the way. It has been to um, hollow out this main island. And I've been doing so by hand before I realized I could just TNT it. I haven't gotten back here in a while, so it's still being done by hand whenever I think of it. I also decided, eh, I want to try hollowing out one of these obsidian pillars. Every time you summon the dragon, these obsidian pillars reform themselves. But I wanted to go obsidian mining at one point, and so I did. And I kind of dug all the way down to the bottom of the world. Or close to it. Eleven blocks from the bottom of the world. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I gotta be careful or else I'm gonna fall. Hi, Diego. I hear you over there. Now we're crammed in here. <clears throat> and we made it to the hollowed out spiral staircase where I didn't give up <laughs> moving around here. I've got my beacon over here. 
to help mine this thing, even though endstone is still very slow and annoying. <clears throat> yeah, that's the end. It's been an interesting project. I wouldn't say it's been my favorite, but it's... It's relaxing. Um, trying to think what else that we've actually done. Not much else, honestly. Now, one of my new projects, however, has actually been... I need to go over here. The cool thing about the end portals, like this one over here where this beacon is, is that it will take you back to your bed. And right now my bed is positioned in the mesa. So it'll basically take you all the way home. Not some other um, other spot in a parallel universe, but just your house, wherever that is. What I have done with multiverse, multiverse, yeah, what I've done with multiverse is create a s small series of portals to other worlds other than overworld, nether, and the end. And I've started just playing around. Like, this one is a void world, which I got an idea from Tango Tech on creating a star field in the roof. Actually, I need to fix this. Black concrete is what I need. Those are not supposed to be open to the sky, and the only way to spot those with black concrete is by... <laughs> yeah. Waiting till it's daytime and trying to spot them from below. I have a couple other portals here. This one goes back to the Mesa. This one I just created a couple days ago. This is just a flight outside along with some test things. <laughs> um, within the main center area of this, what I call a lobby, it's really just a portal nexus of sorts. We have a couple other maps. One is Minas Tirith, which I downloaded from Planet Minecraft. And you can see we've got a uh, credit over somewhere. Is it here that we've got the credit? Minas Tirith by Avayev. And it's in Portuguese. and with a link to uh, look at it. Additionally, we've got the portal back to the lobby. Some upside down cows. And then over here, I did not build any of this. This was by this Brazilian group. Just completely overwhelming amount of uh, detail of Minas Tirith from The Lord of the Rings. Right now, the actual level of detail is not that high, I will admit that. A room of crafting benches. An empty street. An empty room with no ceiling. And a couple other windows up at the top. So basically, the, ma the build is massive, but it's not very well detailed. And so my thought was, Michael loves to detail stuff. Michael loves to build this kind of stuff. Not this to this extent as you saw before. But I thought, why not give him a nice little pre-built mega build of just stuff from a recognizable movie franchise 
and let him go through in creative so you don't have to ask for you don't have to hunt down blocks in order to work on it and you just build it just work on it do it yourself it's not a lot of detail in it yet so why don't you put the detail in I thought it would be nice you can do this in creative anybody can come here and just work on it and in fact I've already started to work on it if we head around to the uh, front of the palace of the throne room well these this has all been pre-done but if you look up these used to all be glowstone lamps. I replaced them with modern lanterns. I also decided I'm gonna replace these with campfires because these used to be a bunch of torches just spammed everywhere. Torches are a little bit prolific in this build as you can tell. They're the only lighting source other than glowstone so you can tell this was built in an old version before they had all the new stuff like lanterns and campfires and that kind of thing. A horse stable. It's just, it's a very drab build, but the scale is massive. So you will have a ton of fun just coming in here and working on whatever you feel like working on in a day. They did some world edit ter terraforming terrain modification <clears throat> I copied out to a certain distance I don't remember my radius but I've also got world border installed so if you hit the edge of the world beyond what you can travel it won't let you go further and generate the map and then waste a bunch of disk space so yeah you can see the edge of it Ugh, that scared me Yeah, we've reached the edge of the world, and if we go off the edge, it resets us. So, that is that. The second thing I put in for this multiverse, that goes back to the spawn island, is Bed Wars. Bed Wars, super popular minigame. Um, this is a lobby for Bed Wars that I downloaded from Planet Minecraft. None of it is mine. Zeppelins, floating islands, yeah. It's just, it's fun to come in here and wander around. Just jump on all the stuff, parkour across all the little mini islands. When you actually want to play, the idea is you head over to this center and you click it. You can see off in the distance, the lobby is sitting way over there. Down in the middle, we have six islands around a central island and four mini islands. The idea with this is that you have a little bit of an arena. And if we were playing, we would defend our bed. That's the idea of the game, is you defend your bed and you try to destroy everybody else's bed and be the last one standing. So it's a fairly simple arena game. Last one standing, and the only way to win is to destroy everybody else's bed. So it's bed wars. Yeah. And we can get out of here via this. Got a little bit of a scoreboard. Your Bed Wars stats. I've killed five people. I've died three times. I have a 1.67 ratio. I've won three times. I've lost once. And I've played four games. So, last weekend we played with Mike and Andy all together. Three, uh, three versus three. It was not three versus three, but one versus one versus one. Super fun. Little fake portal, but you just smash your face into it and it heads over there. Last place to look is something I put in earlier this week. I would say probably Tuesday. This is my this is a massive copy of my creative test world which I ran in 
creative mode on my laptop or rather on my work computer for the longest time finally took the save file <clears throat> every other creative world that I had available to me copied them in via world edit including this massive tree which is actually a survival project that we're working on in the main world which we've kind of gotten a little bit discouraged over so I decided hey why don't we put it in creative we'll take a schematic of it we'll recreate it block by block in the real world that way we can get our shaping <coughs> done in creative and then just grind in survival instead of trying to figure out and then redoing and then getting discouraged and that kind of thing so that's what that's all about uh, time set make it daytime we've got my Gary Busey pixel art project we've got some TNT benchmarking how does TNT explode with non explodable blocks since ancient debris is not only a barrier block, not barrier block, that's a different thing. Since ancient debris is the new poster child of Minecraft, basically it is as durable as obsidian, which blocks explosions. So the idea was I built an obsidian TNT cannon and just observe what is the damage to the blocks around it. Well, I've fired this thing multiple times and um, I've survived. Or rather, the glass around it has survived. It was exactly the same for Ancient Debris. The cool thing about Ancient Debris is you can actually move it around with pistons, whereas Obsidian you cannot. Here I had an open top covered in wool just to keep the explosion a little bit contained. The idea is you'd set that off and observe how the glass broke around it. This one, same deal. I had these corners broken out like this. And you could see that this corner blasted out as soon as I hit that button and lit the TNT. Additionally, this side was open. Was open. <laughs> it isn't now. So I've been reusing these test benches for uh, multiple tests. Over here, my first attempt at note block music. Work in progress. It's almost done. We have a set reset subtractor lamp. We push this button to turn on. The lights stay on. Turn this button, turn them off. And it uses some um, comparator subtraction logic. I've tried my hand at bind runes for uh, Daniel, Andy, Mike, Joy. Here's a test villager breeder. Again, villagers are missing because I they broke because they don't longer store in here. And Impulse has stated that he has a fix for it. I remember seeing this fix for it, but I can't find his video for that. So over here is a giant project that I went through for the No Dumb Questions podcast, which we had a guy um, rent us a server server space and I jumped in there uh, specifically fans of the podcast created this Minecraft world and I decided I'm gonna do the work and I'm gonna make the logo in Minecraft this is what I was referring to as far as map art you come down to this central island and you can see that a, this scales up and you can put it on a single map it's pretty amazing so
So you make a, I don't know, remember if this is 128 by 128 or 256 by 256 area, fill it with colored blocks. The map will fill that in. Essentially, you can make an entire picture. And in fact, on the Hypixel server, they have an entire map wall of this kind of stuff for a bunch of their advertisements and that kind of thing. And it, it, it's amazing how much work they went through. I mean, I imagine they world edited a lot of it in, or came up with a script to do it themselves. Currently, my creative project with Redstone is a automatic card dealer shuffler system. So I've created banners that are all 13 types of cards. Uh, in the survival world, I've created an entire 54 card deck. And then I just started playing around with, okay, what is the best way to shuffle cards? So if we come over here, if we check this out, we have six banners in here, five banners in here. We trigger this system. We now have pulled out that first banner and piped it up to the top. So this is basically a dropper elevator, is what they call it. And that just detects when that block changes, so it always runs whenever you make a change. This one, card shuffler, sort glass in chest and flip on, wait for a while, then check. So we have this assortment of glass, we turn it on, And we just take a dropper, which the dropper is a little bit of a randomizer. It's not perfect. In fact, it's not good at all when you've only got one. Especially when hoppers and chests suck items out in a certain order and you've only got one randomizer. You really need a lot. But you turn it off, wait for everything to come back in, and then check, and you see if it's how different it is. This was my first test. It works. It's not great. This is a compact demonstration on how to detect a full chest. Basically, you see that we have a almost full chest. If we were to take 64 items in a stack is full. If we add one, we see that a redstone signal of 15 sets off a firework over here. Additionally, a redstone signal of 15 can fit into this nice little 4x2 area using some subtraction math. And the light went off. So we can detect a full chest in such a small area in comparison with this huge line of redstone. This is my second shuffler. Much more reliable. Interestingly, it is a lot slower. And this is actually the first iteration of it. It's not the final version at all. Right now, what I have here is a full chest detector right here, which runs into this area, which is an RS latch. So as soon as the full chest detector turns on, the latch latches a certain way, which turns on the rest of the system. Over here, we've got a nice little clock that runs both a note block and this dropper and the dropper throws items into the filter and it keeps going until the chest is empty and, and as soon as the chest is empty the latch is switched again which turns this system off and also triggers that system up there to turn on rather instead of triggering the system to turn on we have another exactly identical to that one down there system 
which detects a full chest. As soon as this chest is completely full, this latches on, triggering the clock to run the dropper right there and throw everything back down. So it's basically full chest, empty it. As soon as it's empty, you turn off. That one down there, If as soon as the chest is full, it turns on, and as soon as the chest is fully empty, it turns off. It won't keep cycling items. So we can actually head down and try that out. This note indicates that the bottom is piping up to the top. And we can actually check progress right here. As soon as it's full, that system turns on. And we see that items start falling back down. <laughs> not the fastest but it is somewhat reliable and we can see this system will not turn on until this chest is completely full and it did and then we've got a master off switch right there and we'll wait till they're coming back down to uh, <coughs> turn this off I don't have a master off switch that will let everything run until it's in an ideal state to turn it back on. Now we can turn it off and it will finish emptying the top chest into the bottom and just stop. It won't restart. I've also got a test creeper farm over here. which it doesn't work right now just because you know this is in peaceful mode but the idea being let's have a place we can test the water mechanics of the creeper farm this was a, an attempt to create a multi-item sorter I don't remember how it works at all and in fact I don't think it ever did <laughs> we've got a melon and pumpkin farm of a non-ideal state. We've got a test for um, activator rails. What do activator rails do? Well, this tells you. Let's go ahead and turn these on. This is supposed to be running all the time. It just shows you what activator rails are supposed to do. This is a shulker box unloader. You put a shulker box into a certain space, namely right there. The hopper sucks out all the items as soon as the shulker box is empty. The system shifts and the piston breaks it and stores it as well. So it basically expands a shulker box's storage into... And you're supposed to stand here in order for that to work. It's not the fastest, but it does work. A test with item filters. Will an item of 16, a, stack, a, 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 a quarter stackable, filter the same way as a fully stackable item? Actually, yes. It's just that instead of 41 to be the lower threshold of filtering versus sitting there doing nothing, it's 10. So you can actually store up to six more before it fills up and almost overflows, but it won't actually overflow and break the system. I do not Oh, this was a pause. This is a pause until the until the system is empty detector, basically. We have a 
minecart that runs back and forth, and in fact, there is supposed to be supposed to put items in here. Like so. Put that there. I don't remember how this triggers. But the idea being, eh. Yeah, this currently does not work. But the idea being we have a decay clock around here that would temporarily pause the uh, minecart right here. Otherwise, this block would remain powered and it would bounce back and forth. So the idea being if we have a pumpkin farm such as this, this minecart always runs until it has something in it, in which case it will trigger stop, unload a little bit, which it just did, and then restart. And that's how that works. There's some more of the stork over there. I also built Baba Yaga's uh, house, <laughs> or started on it. I have a couple cow farm, sheep farm, another sheep farm. And this is what I worked on yesterday, which is another juggler, or rather a um, shuffler. It is not yet done but it is fairly spectacular in that it throws all the items up to the top a block there makes sure the water flows rather than stagnating so all the items will eventually fly out gets collected down here at random angles and re-enter the chest. However, it is not sucking out items fast enough, and therefore we have a rotation of just a couple items from the chest at any one time, and none of these actually make it into the system. So I'm thinking I need to either quadruple this, or possibly Actually, we could probably do this now. If we take another hopper and pipe it into this one. Now we're moving. Well, we caught up a little bit. We can see we can we still can only pipe items into this so fast before it gives up. And we're kind of limited at the moment as well. So what we need are multiple hoppers running into this dropper in order for it to work effectively. But yeah, that's the idea. And it is fairly effective at shuffling. It's just not fast. <laughs> it's not fast enough to shuffle the entire double chest. It's fast, it's effective, it does randomize, but it doesn't do it fast enough. Anyway, uh, another shot at bin runes, making them look cool with the whole fog effect and stained glass. And my uh, main bin rune of the DM a J for initials. That's the idea with these things. We have the D on the left, M on the right, A on the bottom, J on the top. Nice little bin room. Yeah. This was a test for a flying machine. 
it is broken. I don't know why I copied just that. And then Andy came over here and uh, was so impressed by all of this that he just created a massive sign. Time set night. As you can see. A sign to show his impressed nature. <laughs> wow. Which I came in and read as I, Mom. Which I then edited to say I, Hi, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I was afraid somebody was going to do that. Of course. It's like the first thing I did was read I, Mom. And got confused. So, that is that. Uh, nice little delay clock. Vertical redstone signal and stuff. You could probably turn this off. In any case, we come back over to here, to our portal, jump through, and we're back to here. And I jump through here, and we're back in the world. Back at spawn. Little chicken farm in here, which is actually not a chicken farm anymore, because I let them out. Oh well. It works. It just doesn't work right now. So that is basically it. Hope you've enjoyed. I am going to go ahead and stop this.